So, as the song goes, What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. And repeat, no more. So, you know, I do a lot of videos and it's always like dramatic. Look how bad the world is. Look at the decay. The decay in 4K. Look at, look at these horrible people doing terrible things. But um, sometimes it's nice to just uh, remember what it is we're fighting for. Or, less dramatically, what it is we're collecting photons for. Now, I've got three young children, nine, seven, and two. Uh, Two-year-old, soon to be three. He's exiting babyhood and entering, no, he's been in toddlerhood for about a year now. But, um, you know, like they, they tell me all the time what it is they want, what it is they like. Uh, I can see with my own eyes and feel with my own heart what children gravitate towards. And it's simple. Children love hugs and affection and closeness with people who they know care about them and love them. They instinctually, like an opposing pole of a magnet, they just click into place in a family with their mummy and daddy and they love it. Kids like to play with toys and use their imagination and giggle and run around and laugh with each other. And that's beautiful as well. And for me, some of my most inspiring moments in my life is watching how my innocent and naive and pure children react to surprising events or interesting situations. And that, to me, ladies and gentlemen, is what God is. You know, I talk a lot about my personal holy trinity, love, truth, and beauty. Love, truth, and beauty. Plot them on a triangle. They all relate. It's like speed, distance, and time. And of course, the holy trinity of um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I'm not, not going not to go into mainstream theology here. We're going to keep it personal. So, you know, if you want to do an experiment to find out what God is, um, find a child, pro preferably your child, or a family, family member's child. I don't advise you to go up to random kids and uh, demand the following. But if you've got, you know, in your life, a happy little seven-year-old or a happy 10-year-old or a happy 12-year-old, just ask them to write down or to list just by telling you their top five favorite things in the world. And uh, you will have a mystical experience. You will see how close some people are to divinity compared to others. And you will see how children, you know, in their, you know, double digit years or single digit years have literally come from eternity to come and uh, hang out and uh, give us meaning in this uh, slowed down, all energy slowed down to a, a, a vibration world. Now, for me, I, I had a great response. I relaunched a music video where uh, there's a lovely song and, I, and towards the end, I say, believe in the future, be optimistic, pursue excitement, have babies. And it's good to know that somewhere in the world right now, probably in many locations, there are babies being born. And every single baby born is a slap in the face to the depopulationists, to the haters, to the nihilists, to those who want to destroy rather than to create. For those who want a technotronic slave world, every single baby born is another chance for freedom, is another chance for truth, is another chance for beauty. There's something sacred about babies. You know, I've always been a big fan of babies. When I'm in a queue, when I'm anywhere, um, babies uh, tend to stare at me and I always do the, ah, you know, you do them a little, little, uh, little show, little circus show. And they usually smile and giggle. Very, very rarely does a parent get upset or offended. And 99% uh, of the time, the parents totally get that I'm another parent having fun with their baby. Because let's be honest, babies are actually nicer people than most people. There's a lot of um, street sweepers going on. Is it loud? Or is my camera coping? I hope it's coping. 
So, you know, in a sea of junkies and crackheads, people getting attacked, people getting punched, mother and daughters threatened, I think sometimes it's good to just remember that what you find most important in your life, what you hold as your highest ideal, that is your Lord. That is your God. Now, for me, I've got some uh, strong ideas about um, loyalty, about uh, duty, about uh, standing strong in the face of uh, what might seem like overwhelming adversity. I'm, um, I guess, you know, to look at archetypal mythological or maybe they did exist in history, but I'm sure the myth around these men became a lot bigger than the reality. So I guess what I'm advising you all, like for me, my two bros, my two pillars, what's the, what does he say in that film? Is it pillars of Boaz and Joaquim or, or something? I forget. And um, my, my two dudes, my two homies, would be, I guess, King Leonidas and what he represented as an archetype in terms of duty, loyalty, sacrifice, and defending everything you hold dear in the physical, real world, you know, very manly, masculine, strong, sacrificial, God-type archetype. And then you've also got Jesus Christ, who um, acted very differently to King Leonidas. He certainly didn't defend anything in the material physical realm but uh, by not trying to and by saying there's another world he actually stumbled upon no he didn't stumble upon it look into Greco-Buddhism look into Alexander's conquest of India and Buddhist parts of Asia and you'll see how he brought that stuff back to Greece back to the Holy Land back to Judea and so the world was a lot more connected than you think. And so, how do we end this? How do we end this? I guess it's uh, eat heartily, men, for tonight we dine in heaven alongside Bro Jesus. Thanks for watching.